Yo, what it do, St. Louis? Y'all know what it is. It is time for Hustle, St. Louis Hustle podcast with Cortez Hustle and Michelle A. And today we're, we're talking right about on, we're talking about the importance of business coaching and mentorship, but this goes across the board. It don't have to be business coaching. You could have a life coach, a family coach, a marriage coach. So what we're going to do is roll this intro for the time being. So let's get into... Growing up in St. Intro. Louis has never been easy. And most say, if you want to succeed here, that you must leave and put down roots somewhere else because of the strong crabs and apparel mentality here. I don't know if I'm just an optimistic person, but to see people like Chuck Berry and Nelly make it in the music industry, or the Roberts Brothers and Dave Stewart in business, or William Lacey Clay Jr. in politics, can we blame the city? Or is it that people just aren't hungry enough? We're talking to all of the movers and shakers in this town, from entertainers to politicians, social activists and organizers, and of course, entrepreneurs. Is there a curse on this city that holds people back? Is there an unseen hand that decides who makes it and who doesn't? You're about to find out. Welcome, Welcome to St. Louis, Louis Hustle. Hustle. We do. Because we just jump right on in the stuff. We need like a marum. We need some catchy. We need a hook. We, we, we need a hook. hook? <laughs> hey, Murphy Lee said we don't need no hook. Man, we need to from feet. You know what I'm saying? We need like a um we need like something that symbolizes like what we doing. You know what I'm saying? We need like a like a what up song. You know that what I'm saying? Something that's like a uh uh like like a, um like a what up Tess? What like up, a, Shell? Like a, uh, yeah. What up, Tess? What up, uh, Shell? Okay, okay. <laughs> Something that uh like what's that that one fifty cent joint thing that um uh, that uh that uh hustle thing it was something in the club that there was a some theme song fifty cent used to do yeah it was some yeah. oh 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 uh what up uh what up Tess what up you know what I'm saying you get what, what up, I put down what up Shell yeah yeah okay what okay what, what up hustle love what up Tess what up Don't Shell we- what a hustler. Okay. Okay. You give me, it, it, it just, we just need to get a flow. What up, Tess? What time? What up, Shell? What up, Tess? What up, what up Shell? Okay. Okay. Here we go. What up, Tess? What, what up, Shell? What up, St. Louis? What, what up, up, hustler? Okay. Okay. Well, well, how about this, man? Any of our uh musically inclined friends of the show uh want to help us out with uh some theme music an intro um you know we 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 trying we trying so um do us a favor go ahead and shout yourself out man where you at what set you tuning in from this is all st louis all the time um yeah i don't know if you guys got a chance to catch out our uh daily host uh our question of the day last week but um chile actually was in the streets and got a couple um video responses to last week's question of the day so uh, i'm trying to get the monitor together so i can see a little something something so i can see people's questions and the comments there we go there we go all right Well, I might need to turn down that monitor. That will yeah. work. There we go. All right. So we good. We good there. All right. So you had a couple video responses to last week's question of the day. Before we get into this week's question of the day, um, you want to cut to or set those up? Yeah. Yeah. So for last week, the question of the day is, can a uh, former drug dealer um go legit you know we know they can people you know convert their lives change the hustle all the time you know mm-hmm. i'm not wrong with that mm-hmm. and so the question was once you go legit you know once you have converted the hustle can you run a legitimate business all the way legit 
but can you run a legitimate business um legitimate with like can you run it without using the um street strategy mm. that was the question right mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. i'm not with street so i tried to get um I run up on people because that's what I do. I run up. <laughs> so I was running up on people in the streets. I was trying to get some video responses, and it was really, really, it was fun. You know what I'm saying? So I was okay. talking to folks, and so, but I, I ran up on these two um, mature gentlemen, and they didn't want to be on camera. So shout out to to Joe and Jesse, uh, mm -hmm. Jesse from Jesse Automotive, Jesse Senior from okay. Jesse Automotive, and uh, they answered the questions. Um, just they really expounded on it and i love getting wisdom from our from our most from our more seasoned uh gentlemen in the streets they was out sunday was a beautiful day they was out on their bikes they was out there killing the game in north county they shut down on their bikes doing the big last name music i was like what is this one of them was trying to be a sugar daddy with no sugar i was like <laughs> stop. But come on now with the you better stop it shoot now uh, but they, they had a lot of wisdom to share about that subject, and it was great, but they wouldn't let me record them. Um, and then, you know what, I just inboxed a couple people on Facebook and had me send, they, had me send uh, they sent me their responses as well. So, uh, okay. you know, I'm going to share a couple of those. So, yeah, go ahead and All roll right. that thing. Let's roll it. Let's roll it. And now St. Louis Hustle Podcast question of the day. Can the individual... Is it possible for the individual to run the business legitimately without bringing in the other hustle? I mean, it comes down to their own personal will. It, do they want to change or do they just want a different source of income? Um, I'm going to say personally, um, I know some people that have. So I'm going to say that it can be done, but it, it, it all comes down to the person. It, it comes down to how bad they want to change and, and what they, their purpose is behind it, what their motive is behind it. Do they really want to change or, or are they trying to get more money like what's the what's the end goal so i'm gonna say it, it depends on a person okay awesome thank you awesome. okay so the question of the day is can you be successful as a former drug dealer and run a legitimate business with the same mentality and strategy all right cool Yes. Please notice my disclaimer due to statute of limitations. I am representing myself as counsel, so certain things I just cannot speak on. Now that we got that out the way, again, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? I think it's just about having an attitude, um, a certain attitude of by any means necessary. Now, the difference in that is the means themselves. You know what I'm saying? So you just go about things a little differently. Um, however, Definitely the same mindset. Let me see. Street mentality, right? Strategy. The pen might not work, I'm not sure, but just go along with it, you know what I'm saying? So, street mentality, check. Strategy, check. Okay? Because you got to have a strategy, and if you got a street mentality, then the strategy is, by any means necessary, check. Mic check one. Okay, mic check. Very good question, though, Michelle. A, hey, uh, my name is Sincere. You can find me on Facebook at Sincere New Flow or Work of Art Tattoo Parlor LLC on Instagram. All right, man. I gotta love the guy, Sincere. Uh, he said, he said, uh, due to statute of limitation, uh, I'm representing myself as counsel, so I gotta. There's only certain things that I can and cannot divulge here. <laughs> You can, yeah, um, I, I don't even know where to go with all of that. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, uh, that is the take on when um, when we do a little business. Um, <laughs> street, street strategy in business. That that answers it. Yes. Perfect. That's the street strategy right there. <laughs> Perfect. Um, this week's question of the day um since we are talking about entrepreneurship it's all about entrepreneurship and this week's question of the day omg i got so much to say about this question <laughs> is 
can an entrepreneur, right? That is um, a person doing business, an entrepreneur, uh, can they be in a successful relationship with a person who is not an entrepreneur? Mm. Love a non-entrepreneur. Can they be in a successful romantic relationship? What you saying? Um, I personally, I ain't saying it can't work. Well, don't give them your answer yet. We're going to give you our answers at the end of this show. But I've got some thoughts on that as well. Um, so do us a favor. If you want to be a part of the show and you want to answer this question in 60 seconds or less, go over to our Instagram page, ST, uh, St. Louis Hustle Podcast on IG and drop us a DM video clip with your answer. And we'll see if we can get some of those up towards the end of the show. But I'm definitely going to give you my thoughts. Can a hustler and a non-hustler make that thing work? Uh, we know that entrepreneurs and non-entrepreneurs think different. So good question. Yeah. Good question, Michelle. Yeah. So, I have opinions on that. So yeah. Okay. All right. Well, when we come back, uh, we're going to send a quick shout out to our sponsors. When we come back, we're going to talk about what's cracking in the loose shell. So uh, what's going on? Got a huge weekend coming up. So we'll talk about some festivities that's going down in the loo. So much going on. I like how you said, said the word credit skull. I'm going to let you have it today. I ain't going to tell you about the word credit skull. Real quick, though, I got to make this comment. I was driving this morning because I had to get out real quick before we started this little broadcast thing. And I just signed up with new insurance. Anybody that knows me knows that my, my little driving, my driving is suspect sometimes. So I signed up with, can I say, a, can I say the name of my insurance company? Is that this problem? Okay. So I'm driving with Root Insurance. They so judgmental. They send me these text alerts because I'm not, I'm with them. They, I'm with them enough for them to take my money, but they send me these alerts like, they're crunching numbers. Like I'm not, I'm with them, but I'm not really with them because they're watching how I drive. And if I stop too hard or I go too fast, at the end of the month, they keep driving. And I just feel really judged because I had to get where I had to get so I can get back to be with y'all. And they, every time I go fast, they send me a text like, we're crunching numbers. Like we watching your self. And I just, I felt judged this morning and you said the whole credit thing and insurance and all of that. And I was just like, I had a flashback, like, oh, I'm being judged. It just made me feel some kind of way. So anyway, back to what's going on. What's cracking in the loo this weekend is this weekend, 314 Day is coming up. Yay. Right? Everybody's excited about 314 Day. I know I am. So I'm going to try to get out and do lots of things this weekend. Um... One of my favorite things to do um, on the weekend, but especially for 314 um, weekend is, I absolutely love the Marquee. The Marquee has the best brunch ever. And like, if anybody from the Marquee is watching, they, if they ain't watching, y'all need to like call somebody from the, from the Marquee and like wake them up and tell them that they need to be watching STL Hustle because like Michelle A shouts them out because if anybody from the Marquee is watching or like they know somebody from there, they know this face because I'm there all the freaking time. I'm the loudest person at the Marquee because I'm the only one who drinks the mimosas and enjoys them. How do you drink a mimosa and not enjoy a mimosa? Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm like, how do you do that? I'm like, how you drink? It's unlimited. And I go with my cousin and we drink the mimosas and we laugh and giggle and enjoy the music and everyone else is quiet. Wow. We're the loudest <laughs> There because we're laughing and everybody we're laughing giggling and everybody looking at us and they're like what's with them and I'm like how do you not drink mimosas and do this while you eating drinking mimosas how are you I don't get it anywho that's why I'm gonna be on 314 day is eating mimosas eating the delicious food at the marquee so awesome 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 and anyway so but also we got these wonderful wonderful awesome T-shirts 
that we're going to be um, Mr. Cortez and I, Mr. Hustle himself. Yes. We're going to be out in the streets with these limited edition STL Hustle t-shirts. Yes. I was right. They bad. Mm. Yeah. See, there it is. You, you, See, just, you, take you just want to hit it. And, and I just love how we uh, just created our own holiday, right? Uh, right? We just said, hey, the area code around St. Louis is 314. Um, right. We can actually put that on the calendar as three, third month, 14, uh, 14 day. Hey, we just created a holiday and we don't need nobody permission to do so. <laughs> right. right, we just made it a thing and somebody signed, who signed off on it? Like, who did they get down to City Hall? Who signed off on it? And was like, you know what? It's a thing. There it is. That, that's it. I, think, I don't think nobody think, signed off on it. I just think we I just think, said it's a day. We said it's a thing. It's a thing. And they do it. They talk about it on the news. So it's enough of a thing where they talk about it on the news. And it's like, they announce it. It's four to four days. So it's that is that dog on big where they like celebrating it is like everybody doing it. Yes. But I yes. just need to know who thought about it. Like, let's do it. Is that the weed day? Ooh. No. Is that what hell is that? Is that it? Is that weed day? It's not the weed day. The weed day is 420. Not that I would know, but I was uh, at this day. <laughs> <laughs> How you know when that is? Here you go. It is Here 420. You go, <laughs> Mm, I'm just mm. saying. I'm just saying. Listen, three one four a day. Uh, anyway, what else is cracking in the loop? We got a few other things going down. Um, I don't know if you like any of this stuff, but I like to go and check out the uh, Riverfront Times calendar and see what's going on. So uh, we've got a lot of free stuff that happens in this city. Uh, so St. Louis Science Center is still doing that Da Vinci thing that Michelle will not go to, um, but. Uh, 13 to 15 bucks, you can go see that. Uh, the Field House Museum got something going on, finishing touches uh, this week as well. Uh, you know what else? There is, for all of my chess aficionados, if you like the game of chess, then a beautiful game, World Chess Hall of Fame, has got an event going down tomorrow, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m., you go learn all about the game of chess. Um, Anybody show up down there, I'm pants and everybody go down there. <laughs> now, try it. I'm sorry. All right. I'm and sorry. then also, uh, if you guys like jazz, the dark room at the Grandel has jazz dinner with Dave Vin. So that's tomorrow. You can go check that out. So uh, shout out to Riverfront Times, man. They always try to keep people informed about what's going on in the city. Um, and we are, go ahead, Michelle. Get your hand up. <laughs> keep me. I got something to say. Cortez. Yes. Salsa dancing. See, right next to the chess event in the Riverfront Times, mm -hmm. where I'll be down there passing people who show up for chess, I will be down there <laughs> getting all y'all. Try me. Hmm. Uh, but next to the chess event, I mm -hmm. saw that they're gonna there's a um a salsa dancing. They got um there's a um they're doing a uh, dance class, salsa dancing, rumba dancing, cha cha dancing, and you can get your dance with the stars on. Really? And it's going to be at the uh, my rough, excuse me while I get the name of this your place, the Majestic Dance Studio. Um, mm -hmm. Now, I don't know what that is, but we're going to find out. You have to Google it. I can't get all the information. <laughs> yes. well, you can do work yourself, but we're going to find out what that is. But it's at the Majestic Dance Hall. I love to dance. Anybody knows me know I like to shake my bonbon. So, but I, I'm going to get out and do that. That is on the 12th, I believe. Yeah, that's okay. on the 12th. From 7 to 8. I'm going to check that out this week. Um, I've always wanted to learn how to um, salsa dance. Um, I just got to find a partner. I have been having trouble. <laughs> Finding a reliable dance partner. Hey, somebody listen. Girl. When you said Google it, uh, you made me think about uh, my father-in-law. Uh, he's working his new cell phone, and and uh, he he's trying to get voice activation all together. And uh, Google doesn't comply because 
he doesn't just say, hey, Google, call Cortez. He likes to say, hey, uh, Google, uh, Sugar, uh, would you um, call Tezzy? Uh, I got to ask him something. Uh, <laughs> and Google is like, uh, sorry, I don't understand. <laughs> Because they call Google Sugar and call Tessie. I got to ask him something. Yeah, so what? we got to get him figured out on the actual uh, Google and Siri etiquette uh, and how to communicate with uh, Alexa and all of these uh, voice activation uh, dealios here. Um, right. We need a country yeah. cousin or something. <laughs> Yes, sugar. Yes. I'm busy. Yeah. I gotta ask for something. <laughs> yeah. That is, Google don't understand. She don't understand. Uh, you know, he was trying to get Google to call my wife uh, the other day. And so by the time he got it figured out, he never did get it figured out, but uh, my sister-in-law heard the whole ordeal. So she just became the intermediary and text my wife and said, hey, would you call your father? Uh, because he's trying to get a hold of you. Uh, <laughs> and Google don't understand. Uh, so I don't know if you guys got parents out there who are in these kinds of situations trying to figure out this technology. Uh, but Whatever. drop a one in the comment for our uh, folks trying to get this technology figured out. Hey, guys, we have actually got to cut to this interview with uh, our good friend JP CEO. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a quick commercial uh, from Focus Network Media, uh, and then we're going to get into our uh, conversation that we had with the wonderful Miss JP CEO. All things business, coaching, entrepreneurship flows into and through JP CEO, man. So let me cue up my commercial real quick, and then we're actually going to get let you guys hear the conversation that we had with the one and only JP CEO. So don't go nowhere. Have you ever wanted to be on TV? If the answer is yes, we have great news. Social media is the new TV and you are the star. And you don't need a crazy budget of millions of dollars. At Focus Network Media, we teach business owners, entrepreneurs, influencers, and artists how to use video to build their own network on social media. You have the power of TV in the palm of your hand. Go, Go where, where the, the people, people are, and, and the people, people are on social media. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to our second episode of the St. Louis Hustle podcast, coming to you live and direct from the St. Louis Credit Repair Institute studios here in St. Louis, Missouri. Make sure you go check out stlcreditfix.com for all of your credit restoration needs. I'm your boy, H. Cortez. That is my girl, Shelley. And then over here, we have a very, very special guest. We guys, we were talking about business coaching and the importance of having mentorship, someone who's been there, done that, walk 10, 20, 50, 100 steps ahead of you, can help you dodge potholes and all of that kind of stuff. So as we were thinking about who we could bring on to shed some light on that subject, uh, we couldn't think of any uh, other person than the great JP CEO. So do us real quick a favor, JP. Tell us who you are and what qualifies you as an international business coach. Well, thank you guys for the, the warm welcome. Uh, I'm JP CEO. I'm the owner of Unheard Media LLC, the founder of the Army of Entrepreneurs International, the founder of the International Podcast Alliance. I've been in business, it'll be 14 years in August. Uh, I've done everything under the sun from uh, just promoting bands and music to now uh, teaching on an international platform, everything from leadership to podcasting. So uh, I don't call myself an expert. Uh, I, don't, I don't believe anyone's an, anyone is an expert. Things change too much. Uh, especially in the world of technology. However, I am uh, probably 
one of the hardest working people you'll ever come across. I, I just don't stop. So I tell people all the time, there are people who are uh, smarter, have more money, more popular, but there are very few people who can outwork me. So um, I go through, I don't know, three or four books a month just to keep my chops up. Uh, I look to the people who I do business with to keep my chops up. A lot of people look to me for answers. And if I don't have those answers, you know, I'm required to be able to at least point them in the right direction. So I, it's, it's a constant grind. The people who say, you know, when you love what you do, you, you never work another day in your life lies. I work, I work, but I love it. Right. I, I call, I call lies on that one. I don't know who's not working, but I'm working, but I love it. I love every second of it. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, well, thank you for being here. Uh, I know Michelle has a couple questions for you, so we'll let her go ahead and kick things off. I, I will. Thank you so much, Cortez. <laughs> Is it that I look anxious when I'm over here? Is it that I'm always like, oh, I um, so I do. So I was super excited, right? When I found out that JP was going to be a guest because OMG, right? I, I love business and and the whole business mentoring um, thing that you do, I think it's totally, uh, it's amazing. It, it's exciting. Um, uh, I was trapped. I like to say was. I was trapped in, in the corporate business world for so long. Um, and, and I have that in my tool bag. But I absolutely love the, the world of business um, for 60. You know, so what is it that you bring um, as a business mentor? What is it that you have to offer to clientele? Someone who wants to book you as a as a business coach. What do you bring to the to the table for someone? So I think that the biggest thing that I'll bring is a a plan of action that is meant just for you, right? So a lot of people come to me and say, "I went to your website and I didn't see your pricing." Uh, mm -hmm. And you won't. I am not McDonald's. You cannot come to JP and order a number three. Uh, I get uh, I get deep into your business, right? So there is no one who I uh, am associated with, whether they're a client or that I'm coaching. Like I'm all up in your business. Like I know everything, right? I dig deep and uh, I build the plan of action based on that. So I can't give you a cookie cutter plan or price because I need to know where you are business wise and mentally and we'll come back to that mental part because it's so important and then I just need to understand how your business operates so I have lots of questions if you have a brick and mortar I'm coming to the business I have pastors that are clients I'm all up in their church service you know all up in their service you know just figuring out you know um, personalities then I need to know how you learn right because yeah. if I'm giving you a bunch of visuals and you're not a visual learner, yep. I'm, I'm wasting your time, your money, and then I'm wasting my time, which Wait. is money. So uh, the thing that I bring that a lot of business coaches, I don't have cookie cutter programs. Not one. one. I never have. Uh, my, my business, I create very niche relationships, whether it's through coaching or you becoming a client. That is wonderful. What? Okay, so let, let me take a little bit of a turn here. There's there's such a joke that is waiting in that whole McDonald's thing that you just said. I'm trying to leave it alone, but I really just want to go with it. It's like, um, can I get a number three with a side of um, a relational intelligence mixed with um, a business savvy with a little bit of a... Uh, I won't just, but we're going to leave it there. So, um... Uh, with the coaching, um, you just mentioned, okay, you do churches. I'm assuming you say you do things with people who are trying to start podcasts. When you were deciding, you know, when in relation to becoming a business coach, right? When you, I guess when you set forth to, to do this, was it um, just the love of like helping people start business? Like, what was it that, what was the grassroots for you starting your business? Like, what was it that planted the seed for you saying, Okay, I can help people do this because I'm pretty darn good at this. My dog on sale. Like, what what got you started? So I I'll, I'll give the short version, but the way I got started as far as consulting, uh, I was actually told that I was too smart to work for somebody else. 
by my mentor, uh, rest in peace, uh, Rick Shank. He was one of my mentors, but he is uh, the first person who ever said to me, you're too smart to work for anybody else. Uh, so that planted the seed. Um, he taught me a lot. Um, and so throughout my business, I actually started out just doing like marketing and promotions for music artists and bands. And then as I got um, more comfortable and more confident in doing business and learning about contracts and learning about the the side that became the coaching side kind of happened naturally. Uh, people were always asking questions. People were always surrounding me. So I'm like, wait a minute, I need to maximize that and, uh, you know, straighten it up a little bit, get it documented. And then I, I, when I tell you the biggest joy is when I see the light bulb go off. Right. When people really realize like, hey, I can do this or, hey, you know, I just I've been running a business, but I was missing something or I was missing some things. And when that light bulb goes off, it makes it all worth it. Awesome. Uh -huh. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, well, when we come back, we're going to find out from Miss JPC CEO, what are some of the steps that one could do? Because we know that a lot of people jump into entrepreneurship on a part time basis. Well, when their business starts to bubble a little bit, how can you help them determine when it's time to go full time? I know that is a scary leap uh, and yeah. take it from someone who has made that leap with no plan. Uh, you, you really want to have a plan and we're going to get JP's thoughts on that when we come back. So I have done two prior Yongevity Better Health Now Challenges. I decided this time around I needed an extra push. A good thing to remember is 32 pounds is the weight of my three and a half year old son. And I am not carrying around a, a three and a half year old, basically. I'm a mother of four. I just want to want to see how healthy I can get so that I can be around for a while. It's pretty amazing whenever you're excited to get on the scales every morning and see what the numbers are instead of dreading it. When I went to convention last year, the day of the 5K, when this lady, Merle, came across the finish line, it, she was visually impaired, she was blind. From this day forth, I said, I'm changing my lifestyle, and I'm just gonna be a whole new me. I was out of control. I really let myself go. And I thought, okay, who loses 12 pounds in a week? I'm like, this is such a joke. But it happened, and it happened again, and again, and again. Anybody can do this. If I can do it, you can do it. Leading up to today has been a whirlwind, but I feel amazing. Everybody makes you feel really awesome when you come here too, so it just kind of like heightens your excitement about everything. I feel so much better. If I could help just one person be able to do that for their life, then it'd be worth it all. I feel amazing. I can't believe how far I've came from last year to this year. I have kept my weight off within two to five pounds, which is a complete miracle. <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the second ever episode of the St. Louis Hustle Podcast, coming to you live and direct from the St. Louis Credit Repair Institute studios here in St. Louis, Missouri. Remember, go to sdlcreditfix.com for all of your credit restoration need. Back with my girl Michelle A up there and JP CEO is over here. Before we went on the break, uh, JP, we were talking about uh, those of us who may have been uh, started our entrepreneurial journey part time because we work in a full time job to put food on the table and do what we got to do. But we got that entrepreneurial itch. So we got to explore that. But when is a good time to make that full time leap or what kind of exit strategy should one put together to prepare to do that leap as comfortable and as stress-free as possible? Oh, that's a good one. That is an excellent question. So I would say the very first thing you do before you even start putting anything on paper is do that mental health check. Entrepreneurship is not for the faint of heart. Um, you have to be mentally prepared for all the no's. You have to be mentally prepared for uh, all of the things that will literally just fall out of the sky, all of those unexpected things. You have to be really confident in what you're setting out to do. The second thing that I would say 
is that you really need to be realistic about where you are financially. That's usually um, number number one and number two are usually the things that scare people the most. So you have to be realistic in where you are financially and then start to plan that way. So if you know that financially um, you're not really ready, start looking at ways that you can live a little leaner, right? And then you could put those dollars away. Uh, I live, I still live fairly lean because entrepreneurship is, it isn't as cut and dry as one would like to think. So uh, I would say, look at ways to start living lean and do that now while you still have that steady paycheck, while you still can stack that money, while you still can, um, you know, still live comfortably, but start taking things away. Start taking things in a way that, that are necessary. Start cutting back. If you are 10, 10 visits a week to Starbucks, you need to, you need to get that down to one or two, right? Um, if you're eating a lot of fast food, that there are tons, <laughs> there are tens of millions of thousands and billions of dollars spent at fast food restaurants because we're not taking that time to just go to the grocery store and prepare our meals. So um, make sure that mentally you are strong enough to understand that it is not going to look how it looks on television. It is not going to look how it looks on Facebook. It's not. <laughs> Right. Uh, the third thing is understanding what you need to actually operate your business um, and don't be afraid of humble beginnings. Right. So I'll tell this story. When I first started out, I was actually managing um, an R&B group. I burned the CDs on my laptop and wrote on them joints. Right. And sold them for five bucks. Well, guess what? We took that and we flipped it to where we could get, you know, that. 20 stack CD burner, then we got fancier with the sleeves. You know what I mean? So don't be afraid. Don't think you have to walk out with the grandest of everything. Just make sure your business is straight. So make sure you're mentally prepared. Um, whoever you celebrate is your most high, you're going to need them. <laughs> you will need them. So make sure you're praying, meditating, doing yoga, whatever it is that gets you centered. Uh, make sure that you understand where you really are fin financially, personally, and then make sure that you understand exactly what you need to get your business started. And again, um, humble beginnings. Don't go out and spend ten thousand dollars on equipment when you can do it for two hundred. Awesome, awesome. I, I love that mindset. Um, money and humble beginnings that that's a great strategy i'm, I'm telling you yes. i walked into my job when i was sick and tired on a monday morning at nine o'clock and by 9 30 i was back in my car on my way home uh, <laughs> it was a wrap and i will tell oh, wow. you the one thing that i did have well there's actually two things i did have the mental fortitude uh, for such a journey, but I also got a queen that when I tell you back, oh. I, if I, if y'all can see the chills, just thinking about how my wife had my back and was like, you mm -hmm. got this. There's nothing like having that partner that can make, that makes you feel like you can take on the world and take over the world successfully. So I did have those two things, but money was nah. Humble beginnings? No, I'm in business. I need to let everybody know. I need to. Yeah, yeah, I was all messed up, JP. I wish I'd have met you a few years ago. <laughs> Go ahead, Michelle. No, I was just going to say, um, Cortez and I used to work together. And uh, when I tell you that was a shot heard around the world, it was like, Cortez, you did what? He did what? Man. Dude, man, he was like, he was a legend. It was like, Man, everybody was like, the child was him. Everybody was like, at the gig, like, man. Oh, man. man. Like, That's going to be me one day. Man. You know, like, you know, so. You know, something Cortez said that I, I, I want to touch on slightly, too, is uh, he mentioned his wife. Yes, yeah. And having it. Let me tell you something having that support, whether it is a wife, a husband, your significant other, your partner, your friendships, all of those things matter because yeah. you are going to get uh, told no, 
more than you are yes. Um, you are going to run into people who undervalue you. You are going to run into situations where you know you can help someone and they're not receiving that help. So having those, those the, the randoms, I believe in you. you saying I believe in you I, I believe in your brand uh, takes you a long way it takes you a long way and uh, it, it is important it is important the people that I, I say this the top five people that you speak to on a regular basis if they are not your biggest cheerleaders get rid of them get rid of them I, I, and when I say that I'm not talking don't go do nothing violent just <laughs> knock them down on the list a little bit I want to be clear because I don't <laughs> JP told me to take him out the game. No, we, that's we not are, what I'm saying. We are filming and recording. Uh, so uh, I'm at Home Depot in line with a shovel and uh, some plastic bags. And uh, my, no, my business mentor said, I got to get rid of people. Right, right, right. right. So, you know, so, take that. don't take them out the top five. Don't, don't do nothing crazy, but just take them out the top five. <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Mr. Right. Don't try to play you for what I can do. Okay, that's quite some advice, coach. <laughs> 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 He's going to get us kicked off. So you touched on the mental health part. Uh, you know, what are some things that JP CEO does to stay mentally grounded? Uh, like you said, entrepreneurship is a roller coaster ride. You know, your ups and downs, your peaks and valleys, and, and you know, things come out of nowhere and shake your whole world up, flip it upside down, and you need to find a center. Uh, how do you do that? Uh, so I have uh, my dad. He's 89 years old he has dementia but um that's how i unload right or it's either one of those days where i've had a crazy day and he brings up something and it just completely changes my mood uh I also I, I have a great support system i have you know from people i've known for 30 years to people i've known for 30 days who if if you say anything about jp i'm the best thing since sliced bread and everyone needs that uh and i'm gonna tell you something i i hit my knees i'm a praying fool i am a praying fool um i'm in an industry where it is not only male dominated but it's usually white males and um you know i've always been uh, one of those people where you know I'll, I'll I'll add a little I'll add a little chocolate to the scene, but it's not always easy. Uh, and I get fought tooth and nail. So I'm uh, I'm I'm praying in the morning. I'm praying in the car. I'm praying before meetings. I'm praying while I'm in the meetings. You know I'm I'm, I'm constantly praying. So um, and then I get my workout on. Nothing wrong with hitting the weights to to let that extra stress out. What you got, Michelle? I uh, I'm trying to recuperate over here uh, from that <laughs> last little segment. I had to get my life real quick. Um, whew, without going back in, because we're gonna have to do some retake in a minute. Um, so I uh, I was I was I got it because I'm gonna go back in. Ooh, um, I love to laugh, and that almost took me out. Um, hold it. Uh, so. When I was reading on your page and I saw a picture and I'm assuming it was you and your dad. Y'all were both in suits. Was that your dad? Yes. Okay. Absolutely love that post, right? And because um, it seems like you feel about your dad the way I feel about my mom. And I love the post because you said, um, I think one of the captions was, um, when you go out, um, he, he going to still try to pray. He going to still try to pay. Um, he going to sing you a song. Someone's gonna take place, uh, yeah. and I absolutely, uh, yeah. absolutely love that post. Um, the support system and and the whole family, you know, mixed in. I mean, you talked about the importance of your support system. Um, I just, I just wanted to just, just uh, capitalize on that. You, you talked about today, and I was, like I said, I was trying to pull it together when you were talking about them. But um, I, I just really admire you for um, just keeping them close. 
you know, because uh, sometimes people get caught up in business and they aren't able to keep their their um, uh, loved ones as close when they get into their senior years um, because sometimes a business seems to take precedence. So kudos to you uh, for still being Thank able you. to wrap the daddy up, you know what I'm saying, and, and keep him right here, uh, especially if yeah. he's in the middle of the state where he is. So just kudos to you. Uh, Thank uh, you. If I had a point for that because... Uh, I don't even know if I had but a that, that. You know what? But that's important. And, and, and early on in, in entrepreneurship for me, uh, I didn't have the balance. I was so focused on making sure that I leveled and uh, I've laid the foundation for my brand that I missed a lot. I missed a lot of, with my families, my friends. I got dumped a couple times throughout the process because all I did was work. And uh, here I lost my mom. It'll be four years this year. Um, that was a huge, huge turn um, for me, and uh, I was determined to have the balance. But you know, on I, again, I want to be clear: um, you have to make sure the people around you understand what your mission is, and that you, for a while you will have to put your head in the sand. So it's important that the person that you're laying next to or that you're sharing yourself with understand that uh, when you're building a brand. It's important mm -hmm. that they're flexible with you. But the second level is when you're maintaining a brand is even uh -huh. more important because now you're fighting. You're fighting at a different level. So um, you have to make sure that, you know, you're having those transparent conversations and, you know, keeping the balance, man, because I tell you what, um, I have some incredibly long days and, Sometimes it's a, a niece or a nephew that hits me with a text. I got told uh, just yesterday by my niece that my spaghetti was Liddy. Made my whole day. Ah. I made spaghetti, shared it with my niece. You know what I mean? And it was a long day. It was a long, hard day. And she was just like, hey, TT, that spaghetti was Liddy. I was like, right on. And that made me, it made me laugh. So it just, the rest of the day didn't even matter at that point. So, you know, um, I'll tell you guys a funny story. So. I'm hold, hold that thought. Hold that I thought. I am busy. Hold oh, that thought. Ahead. So if you're going to tell us a funny story, do it on the other side of the break. And of course, we're not going to let the founder of Unheard Media get out of here without talking about the importance of branding, building a brand, maintaining a brand. But we're going to hear that funny story first, and then we're going to let our close us out gotcha. with the importance of building a brand and how to maintain that thing, man, because so many entrepreneurs are missing the mark on the importance of a brand because that's what's going to stand the test of time so we'll get jp's thoughts on that when we come back so don't touch that dial. kill what's up st louis let me ask you a serious question if i saw twenty dollars about to fall out of your pocket you want me to tell you right well the fact of the matter is i see three to six hundred dollars per month falling out of your paycheck every month. So guess what? This is me telling you. For those of you who do not know me, my name is H. Cortez, wealth strategist, author, and I'm on a mission to empower our community economically through financial education. You know, the last five years, I've been fortunate enough to be trained and coached by some multimillionaires. And you know what I learned? Is that there's only four things that we have to overcome if we ever plan to build generational wealth. You have to overcome taxes, you have to overcome debt, we have to overcome our credit woes, and we have to overcome our lack of asset accumulation. But if we stop the bleeding by overpaying taxes three to six hundred dollars per month, and that's not me saying that, that comes straight from the IRS. So if you want to know if you're one of the 80 million people that's overpaying taxes, all I want you to do is go over to payraise.wealthcreationplaybook.com, watch a short video, answer seven questions, and you can find out if you're overpaying taxes, but more importantly, you'll find out what you can do to stop the bleeding. Payraise.wealthcreationplaybook.com. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the St. Louis Hustle Podcast. I am your co-host, Cortez Hustle. That is Michelle A. And we're here with JP, CEO. Uh, and she was about to tell us a funny story before we went to break. So we're going to let her, uh, before we let her go, tell her funny story. And then she's going to give us a couple tips on the importance of branding and how to build and maintain a brand 
And then I know she's got to run. So we appreciate you. Uh, I'm giving you my thank yous right now, but I, I want you to take the last four minutes or so and give us your funny story and close it out with a couple tips on building and maintaining a brand and why that's important for entrepreneurs. All right. So the funny story is, is I meal prep. I have to very busy. I have my dad. So uh, I'm in the kitchen and I'm actually on a conference call, but I'm cooking at the same time. Right. And he had been fairly quiet. And so he pops his head out of his room. He didn't even come completely out of the room. And he says just randomly, ah, you got it smelling good in here, Betty Crocker. So I'm on this conference call. So they're cracking up because he's randomly coming out calling me Betty Crocker. I'm like, okay, thanks, Dad. I, I, I'm not sure how to take that, but but thank you. Things like that. Like, I'm knee-deep into this conference call about, you know, trying to nail this contract. And he's – so things like that keep you level. So, you know, if you have your parents, both your parents, um, you know, count it as a blessing. Hug them, kiss them, do everything you can while you can. Yeah, so oh, you guys wanted, yeah. So you, you guys wanted to talk a little bit about the importance of branding and marketing. Uh, were there specific questions, or you just want me to give some pointers? Yeah, if you can just give us a couple of tips. Uh, first, define what a brand is. Why is it so important for entrepreneurs to get this at the very beginning, uh, and go ahead and make efforts to build and then maintain that brand? So in my opinion, uh, a brand is not what you think it is. It's actually what the folks on the other side of your business think it is. So, um, yeah. So because that's no, those are your potential customers, clients, partners, sponsors. So um, the brand is what the messaging is actually taken as from the end user, whether you're delivering a service or a product. So make sure you remember that. People are, I hear it all the time. Uh, the entrepreneur is saying what the brand is, and that's great. But are you listening to the end user to really find out if your messaging is clear? Um, I'll segue into what is your messaging? Are you saying you're the best stylist? Are you saying you're the best coach? Or are you saying, you know, you're a niche person? What are you saying? Be clear on what you're saying. Uh, the importance of that message I, I couldn't I couldn't put a dollar amount on it. I couldn't put anything on it. It is so important. When I hear people, uh, entrepreneurs, small businesses say, you know, they don't have time for branding and marketing or they don't have the money to do so or, you know, they don't see it as a necessity. I give them uh, three to five examples and I'll tell you Walmart, Apple, Microsoft. <laughs> McDonald's, right? And you could you could throw in uh, Nissan. They never stop. They make millions and billions of dollars a year. Yet they are constantly pushing their brand, pushing pushing their messaging, push pushing marketing, pushing ways to promote and to get people to constantly buy their products. So if people who are making billions of dollars find the time and the money to do so. How do we look not doing so? And I know the big thing is always about budget. I said it earlier, humble beginnings. If your budget is $300 a month, you need to make sure that you're maximizing those $300 a month. There are so many things you can do. You know, there's social media, there are digital billboards. You know, there are networking events. You know, so many things that you could do for free or little money. Stop walking into rooms and not work in that room. Stop only going into rooms that you're known. Uh, one of the biggest misconceptions I hear is people saying, I want to get to the point where when I, I, I walk into rooms, everyone knows who I am. Nah, I never want to be that. I never want to always walk into rooms where people know who I am. I want to constantly introduce myself because that's how you grow. And that's the that branding part of your messaging should include some level of growth. Got gotcha. you. I, I, I love like it. it. Well, uh, JP, it has been real and it has been real fun. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time to come hang out with us on the St. Louis Hustle podcast. Um, uh, I don't know if Michelle had any final questions, but she don't get to talk no more for the rest of the episode. So 
uh, never mind if, if she did have something, it ain't going down today. Uh, but no, we're going to let you get on out of here, but we appreciate you so much. And I know you wanted to give a special shout out before you go. So uh, yes, go ahead and give yes, that special yes. shout out. So today, today is the birthday of the first love I ever had, my mother, Darlene Phillips, a.k.a. Diva Doll. Uh, happy birthday, Mom. I love you. I miss you. We all miss you, but I'm holding it down. I'm the, I'm the little sister that's the big sister, so I'm taking it I'm taking it one day at a time, but you are missed. We love you so much. Awesome, awesome. Sorry for your loss. Uh, sounds like uh, she was dearly beloved, and uh, she's done a great job because you are yes. making a huge impact on a lot of lives, and we appreciate everything that you're doing. So we're going to cut to a quick break, and when we come back, we got our responses to our question of the day, so keep it locked right here. It might help if I turn my uh, mic on. Uh, <laughs> I'm not a multitasker. I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. <laughs> All right. Listen, guys, we know we are at the top of the hour, and we promise you our responses to the question of the day, but let's do this instead. Let's take the question of the day offline. Do us a huge favor, man. Comment below your response to the question of the day. Can a hustler and a non-hustler be married or survive in a long-term committed relationship? Let us know your thoughts. If you really want to be a part of the show, then let us know uh, via an Instagram DM video, 60 seconds or less. 60 seconds or less. DM us at uh, Instagram at St. Louis Hustle Podcast, your response. And if we choose your response to be uh, on the show next week, then we got a free vacation voucher for you. It's got to be 60 seconds or less. It's got to be entertaining. But give us your honest thoughts. Uh, Shell, yeah. you want to give them a teaser of what you think? Yeah, I, I'm going to just real quick. I'm going to say, can an entrepreneur, because if you say hustler, then we're going to get all the dope dealers. And be like, no, <laughs> Can entrepreneurs, if you are an entrepreneur and you're dealing with a non-entrepreneur, you know, if you are in business for yourself, uh, mm -hmm. can an entrepreneur and a non-entrepreneur be in be can you be in a relationship together? I say no. Ooh. Um, I am an entrepreneur. I am a business, business-minded person. It ain't happening for me. Um, <laughs> I, every time I try it, it just doesn't happen. So if you out there and you can prove me wrong. Mister, if my mister is out there, uh, no, nah. <laughs> be like, this is not what we're doing, but I'm just saying. Yeah, um, I'm going to save my response until uh, next week, but if you are a non-entrepreneur and you're looking for love, uh, and you want to, um, you know, Shell is out here. She's 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 willing to put it all on the line for this very important case study <laughs> to see if right. this is even possible. So right. uh, call us about this case study, uh, but you got to be a non-entrepreneur, right? We already know that she can make it work with an entrepreneur. You got to be a non-entrepreneur. Uh, that don't mean you don't have no job. <laughs> <laughs> you got to have a job. You work for somebody. Yes. So. Might not right. be working for yourself, but you're gainfully employed working for somebody. Somebody um, have a W-2 in your life. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so we appreciate you guys for hanging out with us, man. Uh, quick shout out to some of our sponsors, Focus Network Media. Uh, uh, what is it? Uh, oh, your laundry service. Uh, oh, oh, Premium Polish Laundry. Premium Polish. I couldn't, I was going to call it Polish Plush. Uh, and mess it all the Premium way up. Polish. And the Grooming Lounge uh, by Dwight Foster, who keeps my fade, yes. faded tight. Uh, yes. premier, uh, uh, the Grooming Lounge by Dwight Foster. And uh, y'all, mm -hmm. I done took six. And so y'all, I'm, I'm not going to work today because, you know, I got that corona. So, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I ain't going to be at work today. 
Sorry, that says self quarantine, so I can't make it. She got to stay quarantined because she yeah. got a small touch of I got corona. A little, I don't have a I only got a little bit of Corona, so I, I'm just gonna work half a day. So I'm not going to work today. Sorry, y'all. I don't make the rules. Go watch the news. There it is. There it is. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for this episode of the St. Louis Hustle Podcast. Remember, follow us on Instagram, St. Louis Hustle. Tweet the show at STL underscore Hustle. Like the page. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you guys know people that are dynamic and interesting, successful, and want to be on the show, then have them hit us up. Tag them in this episode. And until next week, get your money up because you absolutely can do it. But more importantly, you deserve to do it. Each and every single one of you. Now hustle up. All right. Boom.